Welcome to a new update on the 1983 Kawasaki 750 Limited L version. So what's been happening over the past few days? Well, let's start at the front end. <clears throat> Maybe you remember I had very wide bars on this bike. They were aftermarket, they weren't standard. And I took them off and when I put them on a flat surface, I noticed there was a bend in the bars so they couldn't be used again and just by chance I had the original bars off of Kawasaki 750 Limited lying around so as this is a budget build again and I want to use all the spare parts I have on this bike um, I at least for the moment fixed on these original bars as you can see here and also changed the mirrors so that's been done Maybe you can also notice that I changed the turn signals. Initially they were connected to the uh, longer bars and they were connected by a bracket which I have here in my hand. Now connecting these turn signals to this original bar makes it almost look like a Christmas tree that with all the switches and lights uh, so that was a, a no-go and what I did was I actually switched out the headlamp bracket here. I had an older version lying around which enables you to connect the turn signals to this bracket on the side. The uh, newer version doesn't enable you to do so. The older one does so I switched out the bracket for this older version and actually connected the same turn signals to the headlamp on this bike. Looks quite nice actually. So that's been done. Uh, besides that, uh, when we look at the sorry the throttle handle um, in this version of the Kawasaki, all the housings, the throttle housing, and also the light and turn signal switch housing is all made of plastic. And this plastic housing, uh, it actually fitted a throttle handle, which had also plastic so we're talking about plastic and plastic and over the years it gives so much resistance that the throttle handle wasn't moving around uh, nicely so what I did was I changed the throttle handle to an older version one this one actually has a, a metal inside metal ring instead of plastic so now we have metal in plastic uh, and I know what you're going to say watch out that the metal doesn't wear down the plastic in the housing but we'll see how long that stays intact and in the meantime I have a very nicely revolving throttle handle as you can see here on the throttle cable it's working very nicely I also oiled the throttle cable so I changed that so that's uh, working much nicer and besides that I spent a number of hours changing the exhaust um, let me show you what the exhaust looked like initially we had a black exhaust on this bike that's what it came with and this is actually say it correctly the left hand side and the left hand side of the exhaust it came with was rotten so I took this one apart the left hand one and just by chance I had an older exhaust lying around from another 750 limited which had the right hand side of the exhaust which was rotten and the left hand was okay so actually I connected the left hand one of this chrome version to the right hand part of the black one fitted them together and let me show you how that turned out so now on the front we have the left part of the chrome and the right part of the black which the bike came with and they were fitted together underneath the engine the pipe in between which fitted perfectly that's better that took a few hours to get straightened out and connected correctly I did start the engine to see what it would sound like after installing this repaired exhaust. I'm using the same mufflers. 
Yeah, you either like them or you hate them, okay? But it has a very smooth sound through the exhaust. No holes, so it's completely intact. <clears throat> this is what it looks like from the rear. So that worked out nicely. So never throw away an exhaust for this type of bike if the left or right hand side is rotten because you can just switch them around with another left or right hand side off another exhaust. And these are extremely expensive so you know if you can fix them in this way then you're really working on a budget. Now these down pipes on the front I'm going to be wrapping those in black wrap so uh, give it a few more weeks and it will be looking very nice. So that's been fixed. Besides that, the RPM cable, that was an easy fix. Uh, the thing is, is that with this RPM cable, it has a plastic uh, connector to the engine instead of metal. On my other Kawasaki, this is a metal ring, and this was loose. So I actually uh, added a ring on the inside to tighten it to the engine, so it actually pushes against the RPM connection within the engine and now it's as you can see here I'm moving it around it's uh, fixed perfectly to the engine nice and tight so that was an easy fix luckily now what do I still have to do I want to ch check the uh, cam chain tensioner I need to look at the carbs again which I'll be showing you because the choke mechanism is a little bit sticky it's not working correctly and uh, besides that of course I'm going to be adding in the new sorry the original air filter now that's going to be a pain in the butt to put back in so we'll be working on that but first of all I'm going to be ch taking out this cross wedge cam chain tensioner and taking it apart and cleaning it because I have a gut feel that uh, that's giving me an issue when I heard the engine running I could hear the uh, cam chain and a little bit too much for my liking so I'm going to check the cam chain tensioner to see if that's all okay and this is of the cross wedge type just located underneath the uh, carburetor intake now you can take this off quite easily with the carbs still on that's a little bit more difficult so um, this is much more easy with the carbs off I can easily access the cam chain tensioner it has two bolts 10 mil bolts um, there's a long bolt and a short bolt so keep track of which goes on top and which goes underneath so we're going to be taking this one out now I did fill up the engine with a new oil a week ago and a new oil filter the oil that was in the engine was extremely black now all the engine all the oil is underneath in the engine block itself so uh, we're able to take off this cross wedge type cam chain tensioner without any issue be careful there is a gasket in between uh, up till now all the tensioners I've taken off I was able to save the uh, gasket so uh, we'll do our best so let's start taking this one off just a little tip before I forget before you take off the cam chain tensioner unscrew the bolt here of the cross wedge with a 17 mil uh, that makes the job a little bit easier. Screw this loose uh, now that it's still fixed to the engine because after you take off the cam chain tensioner you have to put it into a vise or a workmate to uh, fix it and then take off the uh, cross wedge uh, bolt. So uh, do that first, that makes it easier and then take off the cam chain tensioner. Like I mentioned we have two different lengths of bolts. The shorter one goes underneath and the longer one goes on top of the cam chain tensioner. Now it's been unscrewed and the uh, cross wedge bolt has been loosened up so now I'm going to give it a very slight tap with a rubber hammer and hopefully it will break loose. Well two very light taps of a rubber hammer and there it came it fell right out and as you can see well, this one is just a little bit damaged. Uh, most of the gasket is still on the engine. Just a tiny bit has been left on the uh, cam chain. 
So, you know, again, um, I haven't been experienced any oil leaks with uh, cam chain tensioners before. So uh, I'm not too worried. Let's go and take this apart and clean it. Here we have all the parts with the, the, of the um, automatic uh, wedge type cam chain tensioner. This is one taken apart and this is one lying next to it still all together. And just one more tip and that's this bolt head bolt screw which is fitted in here. Try also to loosen that up before you take off the cam chain tensioner because afterwards if it's fitted tightly like this one is then you need to uh, put the housing in a vise to enable you to uh, loosen up that bolt. So let's clean everything up and uh, lubricate it, put it back together and then adjust the timing correctly which I'll show you before we fit it back into the engine. Well, after cleaning the parts and oiling the plunger, plunger and the spring, let's put the uh, plunger and the spring back in the housing first. Now, on the side of the housing here, we have the hole for this screw that holds in the plunger. And as you can see on the plunger itself, it has a groove. So the plunger very easily fits into this housing on this side. Of course, with the spring. So we put the spring back on the plunger, put the plunger and the spring back in the housing, and we compress, we compress this until we see the groove through the hole here in the plunger. And then we know we can fit the screw back in while compressing the plunger and the spring. Put back this bolt to lock the plunger and spring. Now this is going to be locked tight. I've done it now by hand. And as you can see here, you can still compress the plunger and the spring without it coming out because this bolt is holding it within the groove of this plunger. There we go. So let me just tighten down this bolt first and then we continue. Well here we have the cam chain tensioner fitted again, oiled and cleaned with the uh, spring and plunger and the lock bolt to keep it in place. Now we're going to install it back onto the engine uh, after which the cross wedge uh, plunger will be put into place. Now when we put this cam chain tensioner back on the engine we need to make sure that the timing is top dead center. So let's do that first. Right, well preferably use a bigger size wrench uh, to turn this clockwise and you're probably going to need a flashlight to look into this little hole here to see that it is at T top dead center which it is now so that we have to have adjusted first and now we can connect the cam chain pen tensioner back into the bike I temporarily hand fitted the bolts back into the cam chain tensioner the longer bolt goes on top the shorter bolt goes underneath even though it's uh, top dead center you're going to feel some resistance and the top bolt always has an aluminium washer so don't forget the aluminium washer for the top bolt see if we can get it into focus there we have it so now we can tighten down the bolts to the correct torque and uh, put in the cross wedge well I guess I was right in uh, looking at this cam chain tensioner because when you push the uh, cross wedge plunger back into place when the uh, engine is at top dead center so most of the play of the cam chain is on the side of the tensioner, should be. Uh, you can press the uh, plunger almost flush to the housing of the cam chain tensioner. And it's supposed to be protruding about 10 millimeters. Well, that's not the case here. So it's, for me, too easy at the moment to put on the spring and screw this cross wedge cap back on. 
which means I'm still going to be keeping too much play on the cam chain. So that means that the cam chain has too much play in it. Now, um, you know, for an engine like this, which is old, I'm not going to change the cam chain uh, from the start. I mean, I still have a uh, a full uh, two full engines lying in the shed that I could just exchange into this bike. What I'm going to be trying now is putting in a manual cam chain tensioner, which I have, putting that on, and uh, see if that makes enough difference to take out the play in this cam chain. But this one here is uh, not going to work. So uh, take the next step to the manual cam chain tensioner. Right, well let's take this from a cross wedge type uh, cam chain tensioner to an aftermarket manual type cam chain tensioner. See if that helps. Well, I installed and tightened down this manual aftermarket cam chain tensioner, which now I can slowly screw in by hand. Of course, the uh, timing is still at top dead center until I feel resistance from the cam chain so see how far this takes to uh, feel the right resistance and putting enough pressure on the cam chain yeah here we are now I'm feeling resistance Right, okay. Now it's a matter of adjusting this manual cam chain tensioner to the right tension. But I can feel resistance now when screwing in the bolt. So I can feel that now it's putting pressure on the cam chain. So I'll leave it as is now, tighten down the nut, and afterwards, of course. The, uh, the lock nut, do that first, and then um, give it a go, and then play around with it until I get the tension right. Well, that was it for this evening. Uh, next video around, I'm going to work on the carbs again. Make sure that the um, choke is working correctly and is not sticky at all, and um, Put them back in together with the uh, original air filter. And after that, it should be ready to go. Fire it up and uh, give it a ride. So I'm going to pack up for the evening and uh, see you hopefully for a next and last episode before we take a test ride. Thanks for watching.